So I've got a few things I'd like to get done this weekend. Uh, first one being the starter solenoid on the Lamborghini, and then probably an oil change. Uh, it hasn't done many miles since the last oil service. I know who did it, what type of oil was in it, but I haven't done analysis or anything. So we'll see. If I have a Blackstone container, I'll probably oil change as well. Uh, if I don't, I'll hold off for another day on that. But I would really like to do the starter solenoid. Um, started acting up late last year where you would turn the key, nothing, three, four times and it would fire right up. Starter sounds strong when it works. So in my opinion, that's the device that handles the transmission of current between the battery and the starter going bad, not the starter, which is great because the starter is like $2,300 and a solenoid is 80. So I'm going to go down to the other unit right now via the scooter. Now that I have all of this set up, the Lamborghini only fits on the cheapest lift I own width wise. So... <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, let's go get it, see if it starts. Um, you'll notice, if you are a long-time watcher of the channel, that uh, it wasn't included in the last cold start video uh, because it didn't start. So, anyway, I want to get that done today, and then I'll move the GLS with the, again, broken air suspension. I'm going to drive the 850 tonight. It's been a little while. And then Mr. Wags tomorrow. Been in the 1M today, so time for a change. Well, let's see if she goes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Damn it. Key's not in it today. Okay, uh, now we have the key. No. What, uh... Maybe we just have a really bad battery connection. That's really weird. We have power. Uh, I gotta figure out where the battery is and then we'll take a look at it, I guess. That's a first, that has never happened before. Huh. So apparently the battery is in here somewhere. Uh, I think in there, the internet said. Of course, it's in the hardest to get to spot, but oh man, look at the chip on this wheel. Oh, big boy. Wow, we that's a hell of a bite. Okay, that's a bummer. Uh, anyway, guess I can jack up the rear and pull the liner. Really, not what I wanted to do, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, after a considerable amount of faffing around, got the wheel off. Looks like we got a few tens and two Phillips. So let's get those zipped out. Well, that looks like crap. And it's got a 2017 date on it. And it looks like it's bulging. So yeah, let's get that out of there. I think that's probably done. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't even need a starter solenoid. Uh, I'm gonna see if I have a couple extra Phillips screws or a couple missing. Unfortunately, you can see one of those let go in the frame because there's a little bit of moisture rust in here. Oh, it's not the cleanest Murcielago in all of history, but it's not bad. Uh, but yeah, man, as far as getting this battery out, looks like I'll have to cut a zip tie. A little 10 on the bottom there. Maybe hit those with some penetrating oil too. Like I'll, I think I'll hit everything in here with penetrating oil, even though I'm not taking it off, because looks like it could use it. Well, I got all that off. I'm gonna clean up those terminals. They're kind of gross, but I don't know, not not too bad. Anyway, nothing says like two, three hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini, like an Econocraft battery. Am I right? But yeah, it's bulgy. This thing. I'm going to clean it off and see if it's a, uh, I think it's an AGM, but if it's an SLA, that's real bad. So I almost wonder if the starter solenoid's even bad. Might just all be this. I do have my little top done battery tester. So I got to get the specs off the top here, but we'll test it too and see how horseshit it is. All right. So it looks like we have an 850 rating. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Zero amps. Uh, that thing... Huh. Yeah, the battery failed. Well, again, that's a 2017. It's getting replaced anyway. And Econocraft? Really? I come back to that. That's insane. But yeah. 
State of health, zero. Many stores later. Everyone else, where should we put a battery? Hmm, I don't know, maybe an easy to service and accessible location like by the engine? Italians. Yeah, maybe the wheel well is good. We didn't really think about all the extra room. Anyway, I've got a battery. It's a 34 non-R. This car is supposed to have a 34R, and I believe I could make the terminals and things fit. Um, so I think that's what it's supposed to have, but I know the wrong battery fits, so I bought the wrong battery again. I had to go to a few different auto parts stores, but luckily the regional Napa distribution center had one, so that's what we're working with. Uh, I'm going to slam it in there after I bottle brush the terminals out. Uh, I cleaned them up quite a bit already. Uh, just with actual like cleaning liquid fast orange is pretty abrasive so happy enough with uh oops put that back on there uh happy enough with how all that went down so then clean those up we'll jam the new battery in there and we'll see how the car behaves well it's in it fits everything seems okay so i'm gonna grab a zip tie to push this back together I guess somebody previously broke the f out of that clip but uh yeah, other than that, I think we're actually looking pretty good. Uh, and if it starts, I'll just put the wheel well liner back together, put the wheel on it. I'm actually kind of semi-confident that that was it. <laughs> uh, if I were smart, I would have put another maintainer lead out here somewhere. But, you know, connecting in the engine bay really isn't the end of the world. Surprising, this thing doesn't have a voltmeter. I actually had some nice captured barb zip ties from uh, the Z8 fuel door fiasco, so better than uh, it's better than before for sure. Stab this back on, put the wheel on, and maybe go spritz it off to shake it down a little bit. All right, well, it's all back together. Let's see if we can get a second start out of it. Nope. Still needs the starter solenoid. Well, I guess we'll go put it on the other lift. It hasn't been on the road for many months, so warming up the oil before we park it on the lift for the solenoid and eventual oil change here. Now when I say this is the only lift where this car fits, I do mean it, but <laughs> it's close. It's very uncomfortable. Not that centered, but I'm going to have help taking this off, but uh, at least it's on. We can get it up in the air, take a look at stuff, see how hard it's going to be to get at that solenoid. But it's where it needs to be. Well, she's up in the air. And yeah, actually, it doesn't look too bad. Oil filter is nice and accessible. Um, I'll have to look up the oil change procedure again, but I should probably do like diff fluid and stuff like that on these two. Uh, looks like drain and fill, easily accessible. Multiple drain plugs, they're all marked. Center transfer case, looks like that's all marked up. Is there a fill though? Oh, yep, there is. Okay. Yeah, there, I guess that's trans and transfer case. Um, but anyway, the starter solenoid luckily is on the bottom side of everything. So I don't actually think that's going to be terrible. 
Yeah, just hope the starter itself is okay. That is a very big and very expensive piece of equipment. Um, but yeah, since it's up in the air, I guess I might as well do all the fluids. Uh, ugh, can't get that. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah. Actually, looks like I will be able to get all that stuff. So, anywho, it's at least out of my way for right now. And when I get motivation and look up fluids and everything, oh man, looks like somebody hacked this out at some point to do an engine out or something. <sighs> at least POR that and get some better uh, protection on it. Well, it doesn't look terrible, but ridiculous. People, people. Well, the Z8 is no longer boxed in. I guess I'll take this for a brief drive. That's the most pissed off she's ever been. I don't blame her. Let's go quiet down the valve train, shall we? Well, she liked that. No more clickety clack. That'll do. Oh, it's really hot out but I'm at least gonna try to get that solenoid off. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get at the back of it here and see if, or where are we even? It's actually right up in there. Uh, there are three Phillips screws. You can see two of them recessed there. Um, my goal is to try to get this little guy up there. So we'll see if that works. Then I'll pull off the battery positive and put it in this glove so it doesn't arc out on everything. Um, yeah, I'm not super optimistic. I think I will have to probably pull the starter out, which looks not great, but not terrible. It looks like I would definitely have to drain the oil out of it because it looks like it comes through this area right here. But honestly, probably not too bad. Anyway, try to get the solenoid out first. Ow, oh, I didn't like the light so now you can see what we're working with here. Um, you can see two of the three right here. If I can get this thing to focus, which I cannot. There we go. One, two, and then the three is heading up there. What I'm gonna do, since this is a really tight space right here, and honestly the back of the starter doesn't look terrible. You can see one of the bolts right up there and then the other one you can feel but you can't get at um essentially i'm gonna try to avoid taking the starter out but i don't have enough room to get at this thing sorry about the focusing this thing's rough uh i don't have enough room to get at it with anything except my little uh quarter inch wrench and unfortunately this thing is stripped internally like super bad so I'm um, gonna have to get a new one, and it's Craftsman, so I can't warranty it, unfortunately. So, I've got a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate running the accessories, and I soldered in a big old XT60 to my lithium iron phosphate 48 volt battery, and. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> it works! Alright, well, let's do. A really mild-mannered lap. I don't want to blow up my wiring or the XT60. Wow, it's very responsive. I don't like the fact that it's raining. Twenty five amps, twenty two amps. So it only goes up to forty seven amps. And I believe XT sixties are rated for sixty amps. So 
We might actually be okay there. It looks like it's showing battery capacity as being very high. Certainly not fast fast, but it's not terrible. I'm very curious to see how hot the connector will be once we park up here. I'm sorry, I'm guessing the audio was really bad, but okay. Let's put the kickstand down. Pull this little safety here. How hot? Hmm. Actually not at all. Everything feels very, very good still. That's great news. I um, guess I'll do another lap without camera and see how fast I can get it up to. Then we'll check temps again. But now all I really have to do is get a DC-DC converter, and I think we should be good. Well, uh, we got up to 30, um, but I, I do still kind of just have the wire wrapped around everything, and it's still going through an XT60, and the wire is warm. So I'm definitely going to have to open up this pack and try to get some bigger wire in there or get a second one of these packs and parallel up XT60s into an XT90, which I might do. I think there's enough room if I pull out the battery boxes or modify them to fit a second one of these in here, but this is a lot of money. I think this is like four and a half kilowatt hours or something like that. So I'm not entirely sure what I'll end up doing, but it's good to know as a proof of concept all i really have to do to get this thing working is get a dc dc converter and then i can get rid of the other <laughs> 12 volt batteries which aren't currently doing a blasted darn thing that's cool though e-bike battery success more or less